hello everyone and welcome back to my channel so today i thought i would do a little get ready with me i've asked for questions on instagram and i just thought i'd chat away to you whilst i do my makeup i haven't done one of these in a while and i just really enjoy doing them because i love chatty vids um i hope you find out some new things about me maybe or things that you wanted to know I'm pretty much happy with answering like any question, I'm quite open so if you want to leave any questions in the comments I'll either get back to you or answer them in another like Q&A slash chatty get ready with me um, but yeah I'm gonna get going, I'll show you the products as I'm going along because a few people have been asking me about bits and pieces here and there so I um, thought I'd clear it up, this is sort of like my basic everyday plus a little bit more because I am going to London today so I'm probably going to put some lashes on maybe, it depends how I'm feeling, a little bit more than the average day but sort of just a basic look to be honest because I'm shit at makeup. Someone has started off a re with a really lovely question, I, I really like this for some reason, they've just put how is university going in general, I just thought that was quite nice, um, first I'm going to just moisturise and prime, I'm going to moisturise with my Kiko Hydro Pro Glow, this is honestly amazing stuff and Kiko always have sales on in store so I managed to pick that up for £14 instead of like 22 or something and then I'm using the Ordinary, it's their high adherence silicone primer and it's honestly amazing. Um, I'm using both of these because I've got super dry skin and it's just always a really good base for like a glow within. And so yeah, how is university going in general? For me, um, at the minute, it's not going too bad. Like I'm enjoying my modules, well most of them like more than previous semesters, like I'm enjoying, enjoying what I'm doing. It's just obviously a lot more work and pressure knowing that the grades that I'm currently getting can go towards my final degree, like dependent on um, a variety of reasons. So, you know, there's just a lot of pressure at the minute. And I've obviously got loads of other things going on. I'm obviously having to balance my time um, with my YouTube and blog because it's like one of my biggest priorities, to be honest, because I've built it up over the years. I don't want to just like let go of it. But obviously, I also have to prior prioritize my uni work because it's not like um, I can keep retaking and obviously I'm going to always have my blog on YouTube and unless it gets taken over by something else so it's always going to be there so I shouldn't be worrying about it too much but I always feel so much pressure now that um like things have grown and stuff and like it honestly if you don't post on social media in like a few days you just start losing people and obviously like I know it's not all about followers but it's just annoying when you've built up like a, a nice community and then you just start losing everything so uh, yeah, I'm just finding university a little bit stressful at the minute because all of my assignments are pretty much all due in at the same time or like very close together. Um, and then I've obviously got all my work that I do for the university um, blog and then I've got um, stuff that I do with my management and things. So yeah, it can get quite stressful, especially this semester. But yeah, I am I'm actually doing fine mentally, doing the best I ever have done mentally, which is just crazy. So yeah, onwards and upwards, hopefully. Um, as long as my mental health is in a good place, then um, I'm more than happy, to be honest, because I haven't felt this good in ages, so. Thanks, thanks for asking how I am and how I'm doing. I think I'm gonna go in with my base. I change it up every now and again. Sometimes I do my brows first, sometimes I do my base, but I think I'm gonna go base first. My skin is doing amazing at the minute. My skincare routine is just my favorite it ever has been, and like, my skin just looks so glowy and radiant i don't to be fair i don't really need to put foundation on but i just like to because it makes me feel a bit more secure <laughs> especially when i'm going out to london it just makes me feel a bit like nicer and like i've sorted myself out gym motivation slash health and well-being well <laughs> at the minute the gym motivation has dipped down low i'll just show you my foundation quickly so i'm mixing the bourgeois 123 perfect and nar sheer glow they're amazing for my dry skin um, this is amazing because it does like three things. It corrects dark circles, um, anti your complexion, and it's also anti-redness. And my skin is naturally really red. You might not be able to see it on camera, but it has very red undertones. So this is great for that. And then Narsia Glow is just amazing. I love the coverage of it. So I mix these two together. These are slightly too dark for me at the minute, so please excuse that. I will try and blend it nicely into my neck. Um, but yeah, I need, I need a tan. I'm just going to do that. And I'm also going to pop a little drop of the Makeup Revolution Liquid Highlighter in the shade Champagne. This is stunning, and obviously it gives that extra glow. So I'm going to pop all those together, make a little, um, make a little potion. And but in terms of gym motivation, this is a situation, hun. Obviously, everything's been getting on top of me. Not everything's getting on top of me, but like I've got obviously a lot of things to do. And obviously, sometimes like going to the gym can take up quite a lot of time of my evening. So sometimes I avoid it, but it's mainly 
it's stupid because I'll do other things to procrastinate instead so I might as well be going to the gym so um, me and Megan have made a pact that we're going to go to the gym every single day Sun well not every single day Sunday through till Friday and just have Saturday off next week when we go back to uni um, I'm going to film it for a main channel video on here I don't know whether it's going to go up before this or after this it might be up during um, the time so please spare us on but um, I think we're going to try and do like a main channel video on it like going to the gym every week seeing how we feel like you'll have a little like sort of diary slash documentary of um, our journey I'll try and film as much as I can in the gym um, we're going to see if it like makes us feel more energised we're going to see if we push ourselves and stuff like that obviously we're not going to kill ourselves from it like we're not going to go too overboard but we're literally going to be like cardio one day legs one day arms the next day abs the next day cardio and like just keep repeating it like that and we're going to document the whole thing in a week style main channel video so fingers crossed that all goes well um we are going to force ourselves to go like even if it's like after a long day of uni we're going to just do it fingers crossed that all goes to plan one of the ways that I stay motivated is just sort of like thinking that your health is probably the most, well it is the most important thing in your life. So I try and think like I sh if I'm not treating my body with respect I need to reevaluate my life. So yeah I obviously know that I'm not the healthiest of eaters, I'm not the healthiest actively. Like I have moments where I'm really good, there are moments when I'm really bad which is natural like it's not abnormal to do that like everyone has their days but I just need to start treating my body with more respect you know <laughs> um so that's why me and Megan are gonna hit the gym hard and hopefully we see a difference I just think it will make us more energized more than anything which is gonna be something that's great I feel like I lack a lot of energy at uni and I feel like a lot of people will relate to that I just constantly feel drained with all the amount of work we have to do I really rate our parents for going to work full-time then looking after the kids doing all the housework like I really rate parents for that because that's it's so stressful like um at uni doing everything but then also we have our work it's sort of like another added pressure having work that you have to do at home you obviously have to attend lectures you have to be doing homework and stuff and yeah it, like it's hard to stay motivated to go to the gym after like really heavy days so we're just gonna force ourselves to go right so i'm gonna go in with some concealer next um sorry if this shade doesn't match i know it doesn't i'm gonna be wearing a turtleneck so that's all good with me just gonna go in with the collection last imperfection concealer and concealing under my eyes and down the center of my face for like brightness but um someone has asked what made you decide to go abroad for your course so if you haven't been watching my vlogs or didn't even know i had a vlog channel make sure you go check that out because I daily vlog my university life and just general life events but it's mainly daily vlogs of uni so you get to see what I eat, what I get up to with my friends, like nights out I film us being drunk and stuff, it's like just a fun everyday channel that I love like documenting my life on so if you want to join me go over and subscribe to my vlog channel. Basically I have been accepted and chosen to go on a trip with my course it's actually for one of my modules in third year but i'm doing it this summer and it's an overseas field course um in guatemala and honestly i am so excited i booked my flights the other night and I, it feels so much more real now that they're all booked and ready to go i'm going with lots of my friends on my course because they also got picked which is amazing and we've got a little group chat going and i'm just but i'm absolutely buzzing to go but yeah i decided to go because i thought this experience is going to be amazing not only is it going to look great on my like cv and job applications like that's not the only reason i'm doing it because i think if that's the only reason you're doing something you shouldn't do it because you're not Gonna genuinely enjoy it it's gonna look obviously great for that aspect but also i'm really interested in forensic anthropology and this field course is very very heavily based on that and um, so we're going to be looking at lots of like skeletal remains and um, human remains all that sort of stuff like analyzing bones extracting dna from bones things like that so um, that's why I decided to pick this course, this specific overseas course because I just thought it was going to be a once in a lifetime opportunity I'm probably never going to go to Guatemala again in my life um, and I'm going to be able to do some really cool things that I wouldn't be able to do even if I did go there by myself so um, I'm feeling very privileged that I'm able to go I'm definitely in a lot of debt right now because flights are so expensive and um, so pray for me or just buy my stuff on Depop you choose yeah I've just decided to go because I think it's going to be beneficial for what I want to do in the future I might decide I really hate it but um I feel like it's going to just be a great experience anyway 
and it's going to benefit me a lot for the future and just as a life experience and memory so yeah it should be a good time and I'm obviously going to be vlogging it so make sure you are subscribed to my vlog channel and look out for it because I'm going end of July beginning of August so the vlogs will probably come out as soon as I get back like as soon as I get back I'll bet I'll be buzzing to edit them so they'll be out like early August. I am going to go in with my Clinique Chubby Stick and I'm going to just do a bit of contouring, not too much. I think I'm just going to go cheek, actually I'll probably end up doing a lot so I don't know why I said that. I'm going to go cheekbones, temples, nose. I'm just going a bit extra because I'm going to London like I'm never this intense every day. Uh, right, next question. Ways to make money as a student. Poor as fuck. Relatable. I've worked for the university so I've done open days, applicant days and I also write for the university's blog so that's an income that I get from the uni and it's also obviously part-time it's sort of whenever I want to do it I can do it so there's no pressure if you've got like exams coming up like I don't have to do one it's just sort of like optional um, and it's not so much pressure as like an actual part-time job in like retail or at a supermarket so maybe you could do that if you don't have time to like work part-time properly um, I also sell lots of my clothes and makeup on Depop and eBay. eBay don't take as much percentage off you and my, probably more things sell on my eBay but I do like Depop and I've had quite a few people buy stuff off Depop before and I always sell my stuff for super cheap so it's still I'm getting some but I'm still getting something for it if you know what I mean so most of my stuff is like under 10 pounds but it just it sort of like helps me out so that the way I sort of earn money is like selling stuff and doing bits and bobs and then obviously I have my YouTube and blog but not everyone's gonna probably have that so I can't really suggest that as an idea but um, definitely see if your university has any little mini jobs going like working on open days where you just like speak to parents or tour people around your uni something like that it's super easy um, gets you out as well gets you out on the weekends you get interacting with loads of people like, I love meeting all the parents who come to the uni like I love chatting to all the future students and I just really thoroughly enjoy talking to the parents more than anything because I feel like um, especially if they're first child is going to uni like my parents I was the first child going to uni they're a bit like new to the whole thing so I quite enjoy like telling them that it's like, going to be okay and like reassuring them that their child will be fine here and like all the amazing amazing things about Lincoln so yeah I just definitely recommend getting in touch with your uni my uni has a careers and employ uh, employability center so you can go there if you want to um, inquire about jobs even if you don't want to work at the uni you can inquire about jobs in the local area sometimes so um yeah definitely definitely hit them up you could also try busking as well if you're talented i guess but i'm going to do my eyebrows next i'm using the anastasia dip brow pomade which is extremely dry at the minute um i should have brought my revolution pomade with me i hate myself um i'm currently back home by the way for my reading week um so that's why I've got this like really bland setup and I'm not back at uni. But um, yeah, so I've brought this with me. So I've got my dip brow pomade with my Anastasia brush. I can't remember what number this is because it's all rubbed off. Had it for years. And then I'm using my Benefit Gimme Brow to set my brows afterwards. So Laura said, how easy was it to move from living at home into uni halls? Love your videos. Thank you very much. So I found it so super easy at first because I was so like caught up with the whole uni thing I think if you sort of just get involved and like maybe like push yourself out of your comfort zone you sort of are like all like caught up in everything that you don't really think about home or like I personally didn't I know obviously it's different for everyone because I'm very family orientated it's not like I didn't get on with my family so I didn't really care if I moved away I just sort of like because I was meeting new people and focusing on my course and excited about uni in general and having a fresh start I didn't really think it was too hard to like move into into halls as such so um I, I'm giving you a little bit of hope here that you'll be absolutely fine uh I've had friends that struggled for the first couple of weeks and then they were absolutely fine but I think it just works either way like you'll definitely settle in much quicker than you think you will because obviously when you think about it it's such a different thing like living with ra like strangers essentially that's what you're doing but um when you get there everyone is super friendly or most people are super friendly if they're wanting to make friends um and you get on with everyone pretty much especially for the first few months so it's great it was a great experience i miss i do miss first year a lot so enjoy it while you can <laughs> the brows are done all right i'm gonna do my eyes next right, i'm gonna use my lily england e5 brush um and the makeup revolution um imagination palette and i'm gonna use the brown shade down here sorry not sorry 
and imagine here these two brown shades and I'm just gonna bronze my eyes up just to give them a bit of colour and that's about it. I just go pretty basic on an everyday so don't judge me. Okay so I have two questions about um, my medication and stuff so if you don't know I'm going to be doing a proper video on this very soon. I am on antidepressants at the minute, I was diagnosed with depression in December and um, I started antidepressants early this year um, they have been an absolute lifesaver for me so that's why I'm going to be doing a video, I'm going to do a Taboo Tuesdays about like being on antidepressants at a young age. Yeah I'm going to talk about that a lot more in detail but these questions are advice on seeking help for mental health, I'm nervous about ringing the doctors and how was your experience going to the doctors regarding anxiety medication? So I have had a lot of trouble over the years but persistence is honestly key when it comes to this sort of thing. Um, it's still obviously not taboo because obviously doctors are a lot more a lot more understanding and obviously know that mental health exists. They're not I ignorant to the fact that mental health exists. So I think it just depends who you get because some people like just brush you off. Some doctors give you all these other different things to try and bits and pieces. But because I was persistent and just kept going and being like, this hasn't worked for me. I've done this and this hasn't worked. Um, I ended up finally getting the result that I needed. I did try other things. I wasn't like forcing myself. I wasn't like, I need medication. That's all I'm here for. I just tried all these things and they weren't working. So I just kept going back and being like, this isn't working. What do I do next? And then obviously now that I've got medication, I found that that is the best thing for me. Like I've never felt happier in my entire life. Like I feel like I don't remember ever being this happy and not as anxious. So it has helped with my anxiety as well. Like I did have anxiety as well as depression. Um, so it's sort of like gone hand in hand and they've both been um, improved so much since going on this medication that I'm on. Um, I'll talk a lot more like about the specific medication when I do that video. But in terms of like pushing yourself to ring the doctors, I just, it was so hard. Like when I was in a dark place, I couldn't physically ring the doctors. Like I was too scared. I just couldn't do it. But whenever I had like one good day out of like 20, I would just be like, right, this is the day I sort my health out. Um, I can't be living like this for any longer, like, I just pushed myself to do it. And sometimes I don't really like ringing people, so I would just go into the doctors person to person and speak to the receptionist, because, I don't know, I prefer, like, real-life interactions than over the phone. So, yeah, I just... After, when I had a good day, I was just like, fuck it, I'm ringing it. Health is the most important thing in the world, mental and physical health. So... I just forced myself to go. I was like, would, if I had a child, would I let them just sit there? No, I'd go to the doctors. Like, you ne you need to do this for you and it'll it'll be so much better in the long run when you've um, sorted everything out for yourself. So yeah, I hope that gives you a bit of um, motivation to go do it, I really do, because I know how you feel and as soon as I've done it, I don't know why I didn't do it sooner. So, I hope that helps. I'm just gonna use the shade Angel, which is up here. Sorry about the dusty mirror. Um, using the shade Angel here and popping that in my inner corner and on my brow bone. The next question is how to stay on task, anxiety is a bitch. Um, so yeah, another mental health question. I do enjoy answering these. I may, I might do a mental health Q&A, would people enjoy that? That might be a good one for the Taboo Tuesdays if I ask people what you want me to talk about mental health wise because I love helping people on something that I've struggled with for so many years and I still do um, and just different ways that I've done things to help my life um, be a little bit easier, if you know what I mean. So yeah, I'd absolutely love to do that. So if anyone wants to suggest anything along those lines or if you want any questions answered feel free to dm me if you don't want to comment on this video if it's a bit too personal but yeah that's something definitely i want to do but how i stay on task is do what's best for you like don't push yourself give yourself the time you need to relax and de-stress and calm down um anxiety for me can usually be heightened when I'm in a big in a space with lots of people so I prefer working in my house like I know a lot of people prefer working at the library to get stuff done but I prefer working in my room because I feel more relaxed and comfortable in myself so I revise with friends at home or just in my room staying on task I sorry if you can hear the rain in the background I find it quite soothing but um I can't stop it because I'm my room's next to the conservatory because my room's downstairs. So sorry if you can hear like a lot of rain. Yeah, I just stay on task because I write lists. Like my mind works where I tick things off lists and then I stay on task. And I also don't write like I used to when I first started doing it. I used to write way too much like that I could physically do in a day. So if you write like small little tasks, even if it's just like 
get up, shower, make breakfast, like that. It can even, even that and ticking things off can get you going and like in a routine. So that's how I like to stay on task. Obviously it works, things work differently for different people, but that's how I um, sort of stay motivated. I'm just gonna quickly go back to bronzing. So I'm using my NARS Stephen Klein palette, but it's the, I think I'm using Laguna, yeah. I'm using Laguna, this bronzer, the infamous NARS Laguna. Um, yeah, this was limited edition, but you can get Laguna on its own still. I remember when everyone was obsessed with that back in the day, like 2012 YouTube. So I've got a question saying, have you ever compared yourself slash your looks to your friends? Of course, I feel like it's in everyone's nature nowadays, which is so sad. It's especially with things like Instagram, it's really hard not to compare yourself. Um, but I know a lot of people say this, but it literally is highlights of people's life. Like no one's gonna upload a photo to their Instagram feed crying and being a mess. Like I've uploaded photos from like way back like now but if i'm having a bad day like just to keep active and stuff um and it shouldn't be like that at all to be honest but people edit their photos edit the shit out of their photos nowadays so also bear that in mind like i can spot it like this because like i'm just in that world and i know of all these editing apps so yeah people edit the shit out of their photos so i mean i've edited my photos in the past um i don't edit them as much anymore i mainly just focus on like contrast brightness sometimes put a little bit of a grain effect on but um yeah people edit the shit out of their photos it's the highlights of their life so try not to compare yourself that way like to their looks because they could literally have blurred their face they could have edited their body and also it's the highlights like they could be having the worst time of their life and they're just uploading this photo and you think that they're living a dream and you could be having a way better um, life mentally. You could have the family that you have. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, there's so many things that could go on. It's just not, it's sort of like YouTube. Like people assume that I'm happy all the time or positive or whatever, but I have times where I'm like off the camera, like crying my eyes out. Like, I don't know. I just think like we all compare ourselves too much and I know it's hard not to because of all this media and stuff, but um, ways that I stop that from happening. I've just sort of learned as I've grown up to just take a step back when I'm feeling low about my body, about my confidence and stuff like that. Just take a step back and be like, right, one, my body is amazing. It is keeping me alive every day. My organs are working sufficiently. I haven't got any problems with me right now. I should just be enjoying the moment and not be focusing on what I look like because that's not who I am. And I think that's something really important and something we should definitely do a lot more like just sit back and be like why am I comparing myself to someone I don't even know like we sometimes you compare ourselves to celebrities that like, we don't even know them like I've, I've got to a point in my life where I'm accepting myself a lot more and um yeah it's it's feeling a lot I'm feeling a lot better now that I'm doing that because I think life's too short to be like worrying all the time about what other people think of us it's just not great and yeah just do things for you if you aren't comfortable with your body then go to the gym work out eat healthier look after your body respect it um and then you'll get the results that you want like but don't do it because you want to look like someone else do it because you want to feel better in your body and um you feel like you're going to be confident that way so yeah, that's my advice on that one. My friend Amy on YouTube, I'll leave her up down below. She's wrote, talk about me because I'm amazing. <laughs> True. <laughs> what brand slash company have you dreamed of working with? Um, right, I'm going to use my Benefit Pretty in the USA palette. I think, is it a highlighting palette? No, it's just a, um, it's a cheek palette, which is stunning. I got this sent to me um, for Christmas by Benefit, which is amazing. And I'm using this Dandelion Twinkle shade. I went to Benefit to get my brows done and they used my use this to set my entire face and it looked amazing but I'm just literally going to use it for highlight because I feel like I've gone a bit overboard already today considering I'm just going out for a normal day but yeah so what brand and company have I dreamed of working with I'm also using my Urban Decay setting spray to wet my highlighting brush a little bit this is from Bowbell brushes in case anyone's wondering it's amazing so what brand or company would I love to work I think I'd love to work with Cadbury's you know like I feel like that's a bit of me <laughs> I'm like a massive cho chocolate person so a Working with Cadbury's would be an absolute dream. Um, that's if we're talking about food companies. Makeup companies, I'd absolutely love to work with Kiko. Kiko would be a massive one that I'd really enjoy working with. And then clothing wise, I'd absolutely adore to work with like Misguided or Pretty Little Thing just because I've supported them a lot over the years. Like I love wearing their clothes and stuff. I don't know, I think that's something that I would absolutely love. 
but yeah Cadbury's would be an absolute dream right mascara next this is the Rimmel One Deluxe volume this is amazing like I have no eyelashes and this makes me have eyelashes um, and it's also super affordable because obviously you can get it at the drugstore what is your favorite childhood cake biscuit slash sweet oh god oh god cake Colin the Caterpillar from m and that was a classic childhood favourite, especially if you're from the UK, I think it's only in the UK anyway. Um, that was like everyone's birthday cake back in like 2006 or something. Um, everyone would have Colin the Caterpillar, maybe even younger than that actually, like 2004. Everyone would have that cake for their birthday and it would be iconic and uh, it would taste stunning. Like it's actually a classic, like I kind of want it for my 21st birthday. Honestly tastes so good unreal my favorite biscuit as a child the bourbons bourbon bourbon i don't know how you say it like i'm i'm scared people always come for me about how i pronounce things but i mean we're all from different parts of the country you know give me a break <laughs> yeah i think that even though they're just like a boring classic chocolate chocolate biscuit they're just my faves um, and then favorite sweet as a child i don't know probably kinder eggs even though that's not as sweet as chocolate but kinder eggs were such a such a phase i think it was like in year three when i just moved into primary school i went through this phase of like collecting all the kinder egg toys like like an avid collector like not just like oh i really want a kinder egg so i can have the toy like i'd collect them all <laughs> like i'd actually be a fangirl of kinder eggs like genuinely so yeah that was a fun time so yeah kinder eggs probably what field of forensics do you want to go into after your degree job or masters so i Every now and again, I think about a master's. I'm really not sure what I want to do yet. I think I'll probably decide more when I'm in third year and I'm doing stuff that's a bit more specific. Because obviously, in first year, I did quite a lot of basics, like the basics of biology and chemistry to obviously get me to understand all that stuff before we went into the intense things. I've started doing stuff to do with like CSI, forensic anthropology, trace evidence, human identification. But... Um, next year we're doing stuff like toxicology, fire, explosions, um, nuclear forensics, things like that. So I think I'll find out what I want to do properly next year. But currently right now I'd love to go into CSI at some point and I'd love to go into forensic anthropology at some point. But it could completely, all ch it could all completely change. I might do a master's, I might not. I might go, I won't go straight into a job though. That's what I do know for sure. I know that I'm going to definitely have a year out and I'm going to travel earn money just i'm just going to earn money at my jobs that i currently have when i'm at home in the summer i'm going to work like that for a year i think and then i'm going to either go traveling or go into a job after that i don't know i just want to go traveling i think before i properly settle down i don't want to have i've spoke about this before but i don't want to have a one job for the rest of my life like that's like my worst nightmare um so yeah i'm just going to work really super hard and, and just get money to travel so that i can experience life for lipstick i am going to be using the kiko milano velvet passion matte lipstick in the shade 302 absolutely love this so leah has asked what are your top three holiday destinations that you want to visit and why right so i'd say thailand's always been at the top of my list like i'd adore to go to thailand i just never have been to asia before i like the look of the whole vibe and culture and atmosphere there like from obviously photos and watching videos like i'm literally obsessed with watching like thailand vlogs and bali vlogs and um, so probably thailand bali and indonesia is somewhere else i'd love to go canada Canada 100% I just really want to travel to Canada I don't know Canada really just intrigues me so I think I'd say Canada Thailand and I probably say I want to go to Amsterdam so the Netherlands and um, me Megan and Hattie are thinking about going to Amsterdam at some point so hopefully that materializes because the vlogs would be so sick um but yeah I've never been to Amsterdam before and I'd love to go and yeah last question is best online clothing shops for going clubbing out slash out on a uni budget this guy did boohoo pretty little thing i saw it first femlux i've worked with femlux before but honestly they have such affordable clothing and all of their like dresses go get reduced and put in sale so quickly everything's pretty much under 20 pounds already on the website so femlux definitely i'd definitely recommend trying testing them out those are my favorite shopping places for unique clubbing outfits i really hope you've enjoyed this little get ready with me make sure to hit the thumbs up if you did enjoy let me know if you want me to do these a little bit more often because i do love having a bit of a sit down chat going through my makeup and answering all your burning questions next time make them juicy if you want to like if you want to know anything private 
I'm happy to share it. Like I just want people to feel comfortable in themselves and like what they're doing and stuff. So yeah, make sure to hit me up, ask me some questions, DMs or comment. Hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed, subscribe down below if you're new. Make sure you go check my vlogging channel out and I will see you in my next video. Bye.